bring in Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton. Uh, Senator, let's ask you, first of all, about that question that Hillary was just talking about. Does this pass constitutional muster? Uh, and if it doesn't, do you expect it to end up at the Supreme Court? No, John, I don't think it does. The president doesn't have the power just to unilaterally on his own eliminate entire categories of debt. Maybe he has the power to negotiate a settlement in one case that's disputed, but eliminate entire categories of debt? Uh, no, he doesn't have that power. Irrespective of lawsuits that will be coming, though, uh, John, uh, of all the dumb things Joe Biden has done, this may be the dumbest yet. I, I know it's stiff competition. But just think about how unfair this is for all the Americans who are harmed by this, who are now on the hook for hundreds of billions of dollars of other people's loans. All the Arkansans who didn't go to college, who became farmers or ranchers, plumbers, carpenters, welders, all the Arkansans who went to college and worked to put themselves through so they didn't have to take out debt, whether they were waitressing or, or bartending, and all the Arkansans who went to college and took out loans and, and paid off those loans. Not only do they not benefit from this, but they are harmed by it because they now are on the hook through their tax dollars and our public debt for paying off hundreds of billions of dollars of other people's loans. Not just, it's also yeah. highly inflationary, highly inflationary yeah. at a time when we still have record high inflation. And finally, it simply encourages colleges to raise tuition, harming a new generation of students. That's, that's why I say this is a terrible policy. It's going to harm many more Americans than it will help. And it's not just those who, who paid for their college, you know, took on loans, paid them off, worked hard to pay for college while they were in it. It's also those who never went to college and chose not to go to college, perhaps because it was so expensive and they didn't take on that debt to begin with. They'll be on the hook for it. The Penn analysis looked at that. And it's easy to throw around these big numbers and it, they are alarming that this, this, the taxpayers could be on the hook for $329 billion, according to Penn. They went a step further and said, take that cost divided across the 160 million taxpayers in 2019. That leaves each taxpayer in this country no matter your income, responsible for about $2,085, okay, if this plays out over the 10-year period. It reminds you of this moment, and I had our team tee this up, Elizabeth Warren and her run for president and that dad who confronted her about forgiving student loan debt. Listen. Uh, I just want to ask one question. My daughter's getting out of school. I've saved all my money. She doesn't have any student loans. Am I going to get my money back? Of course not. I saved all my money. My daughter doesn't have any loans. God bless her, said Warren. And the dad said, am I going to get any of my money back? Of course not. You know, you have to think there's a lot of people feeling just like that right now. Yeah, I think they do, Sandra. Again, like you said, think about all the people who have worked hard and who have earned a good living without going to college. Think about, for example, a young man in Fort Smith, Arkansas, who started out as a house painter when he was coming out of high school and then decided he'd invest in a truck and ladders and equipments and now has a small house painting business. He doesn't benefit from this. In fact, he has to pay off those loans. Or a young woman in Jonesboro, Arkansas, who got a degree in cosmetology and went to work as a stylist and now owns a small salon where other people learn there as apprentices. She didn't benefit from this proposal and now, in fact, she's going to pay it off. You could multiply that across millions of other Americans who are not only going to get nothing from this announcement, but are actually going to have to pay off those loans. Loans are, are loans that are now being held by people making up to a quarter million dollars a year. Joe Biden's going to give people twenty thousand dollars in families making a quarter million dollars a year. It's just shocking. Yeah, I mean, when you take a look at it, seventy percent of the relief from this announcement goes to the upper sixty percent of income earners, and typically the people who hold the most college debt are the best educated in this country, regardless of whether they're making one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars or or less, or they're making seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more. I mean, you've, he's clearly chosen what he thinks is some sort of fair target, but but how is it again? How, how is it fair? that people who are the best educated and have the potential to earn the most money are getting the most relief here. Yeah, it's not at all fair, John. And as you point out, $250,000 per family is four or five times the median income for the state of Arkansas. Uh, there are going to be young uh, men and women working on Wall Street coming out of the Ivy League or working in Silicon Valley coming out of Stanford or University of California or Caltech who are going to get up to $20,000 paid off on their loans on the hard work of Arkansans who either didn't take out student loans, never went to college, 
have been making a living uh, because they were able to start working right away or paid their way through college. This is grossly unfair, but it just gives you an insight into the priorities of the Democratic Party. They're once again looking out for the interests of wealthy, well-educated elites largely clustered on our coasts, and that's going to harm the vast majority of Americans who have to pay off their fellow Americans' loans. No one's paying off Arkansas farmers' tractor loans. No one's paying off their small business loans. No one's paying off their mortgage. But our Kansans are now going to be paying off the loans of students who borrow this money freely and willingly and now don't want to repay it. And you can make the case that undermines their efforts to bring down inflation. If you're going to have more government spending that led to this 40-year high inflation, you can make the case, as some of these models do, that inflation will get worse and that will be an additional tax on the American people. But as we always do, we hear from both sides. And we had a Democrat on with us last hour, Senator uh, John Garamendi. Uh, he is a supporter of President Biden's plans that he is about to announce a few moments from now. And he defended the move earlier. Listen. It's not an inflation issue, although everybody wants to holler about inflation. But this is really an opportunity for these people that will receive these benefits to be able to get their act together. They're delaying their marriage. They're delaying the opportunities as they try to pay off this debt. This gives them a necessary break. Get your reaction to that, Senator. Well, obviously, it's inflationary if you spend $300 billion or more at a time we have record high inflation. It also contributes to inflation in college tuition, one of the most inflationary sectors of our entire society. If you're going to college now, you've been saving to put a kid through college. And, and again, what John Garamondi says is people getting their act together. These are people who took out loans. They did so willingly. They did so freely they need to pay off their loans, just like every other Americans need to pay off their mortgage or their small business loan or the loan they took to buy that pickup truck that started their painting business or their power washing business or their carpentry business. No one is forgiving their loans, no matter how much they're struggling in this economy. We shouldn't be asking hardworking Arkansans to pay off $20,000 each for families making a quarter million dollars. Senator, when it comes to the uh, to who has the authority to be able to actually effect a policy like this, uh, not too long ago, Nancy Pelosi was quite clear that the president doesn't have the power to do this, that that only resides in Congress. Uh, so as a, as a member of Congress, are, are you going to say, look, this has got to go through us. This can't be done through the power of the president's pen. Yeah, John, Nancy Pelosi said that because she can read plain English and the law is fairly plain. Again, the Department of Education may be able to enter settlements on particular disputes about one person's debts, but the president can't forgive an entire category of debts. The only, the only people that could do that are the elected people's representatives in the Congress. So when we're back in session next month, I suspect you'll see a lot of people who want to put the brakes on this agenda in addition to the likely lawsuits that it's going to, gen that it's going to generate. All right, Senator Tom Cotton from the great state of Arkansas, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your thoughts. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, John. All right.